This week on Crossfeed, the why of the why. The name of Jesus causing trouble again. Catholic teaching is not allowed to class on Catholic teaching. The 9-11 Christian Center. And the Presbyterian Exodus from Arizona. Hello, everyone, and welcome to CrossFeed Religious News. I'm Pastor Dale Critchley, pastor of Shepherd of the Ridge Lutheran Church in North Ridgeville, Ohio. And I'm Dr. Jim Butler, pastor of St. Luke's Lutheran Church in Dedham, Massachusetts, fresh from beautiful Camp Pine Shore in Fitchburg, Mass. You had a much better week a couple weeks than I did. Oh, I had a wonderful week this last week. Mine was... Uh, I. Turned out, you know, we didn't have, we said we weren't going to have a show because Jim was going to be at camp and turned out that I was gone too um, because my dad went to heaven. That's right. But, um, right. you know, I, I just, through the whole thing, my dad was a very strong Christian. He was looking forward to meeting his Savior. And um, and the, the pastor's sermon uh, at the funeral was just beautiful. Uh, he talked about the forgiveness of sins. He talked about... He talked extensively about the resurrection, and I mean, it was just a just a tremendous blessing. And so, uh, it just I think it really emphasized what we have as Christians, and that was that was sort of his emphasis: is what we have as Christians that no matter what happens and all that kind of stuff. That um, you know, we've got the assurance of salvation and and the resurrection and. I put a note in in our bulletin this week because I've been getting a lot of cards and things like that uh, from people here at Shepherd of the Ridge, and um, uh, and uh, I put a note in and I said, uh, you know, thanks everybody for the um, prayers and and uh, expressions of sympathy, and um, at the resurrection I'll introduce y'all to my dad. You'll like him. <laughs> so. Well, having lost both my parents in the last few years, uh, I definitely understand that pain and that sorrow, um, but also that, that joy, it's tinged. But I keep telling my people, uh, um, I really hate death. And I, I've gotten a lot more emotional about death than funerals. I, I, I cry a lot more when I do funerals now than I used to. And uh, But I say the only other person I know who hates death more than I did is the Lord Jesus, and that's why he died. Yeah. So, the promise and the peace of the resurrection be with you. Uh, though, I don't know if you ever stopped missing him. My dad died um, a little more than a year ago, and mom a few years before that, and I still miss him. Hey, before we start getting crying here, we better move <laughs> on. Um, gosh. Um, oh, let's talk about the why. Um, All right. Let's start there. Uh, I, no, I don't understand. Maybe it's just me. I don't understand why this is a big deal. Um, the the YMCA and YMCA stands for Young Men's Christian Association. Um, and at one time, they really were intentionally Christian. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the great evangelist D.L. Moody did his evangelism in the YMCA. Basketball was invented as a Christian outreach. Um, by a professor at Springfield College who was associated with the YMCA. Uh, matter of fact, Springfield College in Springfield, Mass., uh, three blocks from my old church, uh, actually was originally developed to be the missions school for the YMCA. Hmm. Uh, that was originally its, its purpose and stuff. And um, But in my mind, they've lost that Christian emphasis a long time ago. Uh, you know, and now they talk more about, you know, just kind of health and fitness. Um, and so they're just dropping the name just to the Y, which most people call it anyway. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, who says I'm going to the YMCA? They just say, hey, I'm going to the Y. So, um, yeah. This Other is than really... the village. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but, uh. You know, this, this, I, I saw this and I thought, well, this is like Radio Shack wanting to everybody to call it the Shack, so it sounds hip and trendy. Except people have been calling it the Y since, I don't know, as far back as I can remember. So. Yeah. I haven't heard that about Radio Shack, just call it the Shack. Yeah, you see, if you see Radio Shack commercials, you know, come to the Shack. That's been for 
Oh, probably a year and a half ago they started. Okay. I think a lot of a lot of Radio Shacks pulled out of here. Of course, I'm best I remember. I remember about Radio Shack is the good old Trash eighty. So you know, <laughs> uh, computer. But that's a long time ago. But I mean, you know, the the why just it's. I mean, people have been calling that. Gosh, uh, you know, the karate, karate kid. Where do you take karate at the Y? You know, I don't remember anybody calling it anything else. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So now they're saying that they're they're still intentionally Christian. Um. Although I don't know, my daughter attended preschool at our local Y for a while um, because our church preschool was full, and there was no Christian teaching. I mean, at the, at that, it was it was purely secular. It wasn't anti-Christian or anything like that, but it was just a standard regular preschool. So, right. I mean, well, they do, our Y. Community help and you know and things like right. that to some degree, but our Y um, had a you know its mission statement said something about uh, you know using Christian principles, mm-hmm. but that that would be the prince that would be the law. There's nothing necessarily Christian about the law. And, right. Uh, I uh, matter of fact, our Y had a policy. I recently quit that because uh, I found another gym that did what I was doing. That would only cost me ten dollars a month instead of fifty dollars a month. So I, I switched, and they wanted to pay, charge me another extra month. <sighs> you had to give them thirty days' notice to quit, <laughs> and they wanted me to pay for another thirty days. And I said, "That's not very Christian." <laughs> or is it a Christian principle to steal from people? <laughs> I'm quitting my membership today. Yeah, you didn't give me a free month. Why do you? Why should I give you a free month? Right. Finally talked him into just uh, to, to 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 dismissing the the, the charge, but I mean, I just uh, they weren't they they made it clear they were not happy with me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, but uh, they I do. The it, I mean, I... they're probably the only gym out there that has um, that that you can get like scholarships for based on income. So I don't know. I, I think that. If you can, the fact that you can go there and have a membership there for years and never um, hear anything about Jesus there, you know, I, I'd say if they're worried about it getting more secular, you can't really get much more secular than it already is. Right. Well, I like the guys. Is uh, yeah, we have this triangle in the the logo that stands for spirit, mind, and body. Oh, that's what that <laughs> triangle meant. <laughs> Who was, knew? <laughs> it was just part of their logo, you know. <laughs> right? You know, who knew that? I, I never heard that before. Um, I mean, you know, I was there for from October two thousand two thousand eight, October two thousand eight till uh, May two thousand ten. I was there four or five times a week. Never heard anything vaguely Christian except for let's gather food for, for the food pantry. Okay. I mean, that was about as close it ever got. Right, right. So, um, I just, but speaking of the why and the village people, let's start talking about the gay and the Catholic, gays and the Catholic <laughs> church here. <laughs> oh, that's a bit of a stretch. Okay. <laughs> So, yeah, I mean, yeah, uh, listen to YMCA. It's yeah. not a stretch. <laughs> <laughs> True. <laughs> okay. Right. So, um, uh, Kenneth Howell. He was a concentrate, Pinky. Concentrate. <sighs> okay. Now he's the director of the John Newman Center at the University of Chicago, Illinois, Urbana, Champaign, and Champaign. And uh, now it's quite odd that this secular state university taught a course. Uh, under their school for, I don't know you find out what exactly, what the, I can't remember what this, the name of the school was. Um, but, what, uh, um, but the, uh, uh, um, <clears throat> uh, but they had a course called Introduction to Catholicism. The School of Literature, Cultures, and Linguistics. That was the, uh, and the, rather than the university, and he taught like religion 127, introduction to Catholicism, and uh, his he was appointed. He was the director of the Newman Center on the campus, 
And part of his job as the Newman Center was to teach this course. And so the Newman Center paid his salary. Um, and uh, there was a st- – anyway, he had sent out an email to his class talking about natural law and how Catholics looked at natural law. And he said, this is going to be on the final. So I thought I should tell you a little bit more about natural law and moral teaching, the way that works within the Catholic Church. And he used homosexuality as an example. Um, and I, if I'm not mistaken, that the, even the inclination towards homosexuality would be considered sinful according to Catholic teaching. Um, maybe on this article you can find the exact quote there. Um, um, uh, oh, here it is. Um, we are going to play Blue's Clues. In his um, email to university students, it said, teaching a student about the tenets of religion. Uh, no, uh, uh, it says, uh, uh, anyway, no, he says um, that, um, yeah, and he said that, you know, homosexual acts are considered contrary to natural law in the Roman Catholic Church. And a student was upset by this, this, this email. An anonymous student. An anonymous student. Now, the anonymous student does not complain. No, a friend of the anonymous student complains. So this guy's not even in the class. Um, Mm -hmm. And he said, I'm not a rabble rouser. I don't cause trouble, but... I'm not a bunny rabbit. And he sends this thing. uh, uh, Teaching a student about the tenets of a religion is one thing. Declaring that homosexual acts violate the natural laws of man is another. Well, of course, that's exactly what the Catholic Church teaches. <laughs> so I guess it's okay to teach the tenets of religion, so long as you don't really teach the tenets of the religion. Oh, good grief. <laughs> you know, and that's the thing. He wasn't saying this is what you should believe or anything. He was. It was a class on this is what the Catholic Church teaches. That's the course description, you know. And he's just like, this is what they teach. Yeah, for example, this is how they would teach it. This is, you know. <laughs> so you can disagree with it. You don't have to agree with it to pass the class. It was just purely given as information according to the course description, the course syllabus, you know. <laughs> and, uh, and. Right. The, the, the exam, the question was, the, the subject was utilitarianism. And, uh, um, Catholic teaching. Um, you know that. You know. And utilitarianism and sexuality. And he talked about, um, he says, after my lectures on moral theory, that I, I didn't really talk about the substance of utilitarianism. I didn't identify it as such. You may not be able to see it. Um, it turns out our discussion of homosexuality brings up the issue of utilitarianism. Uh, in our, in class, our discussion of the morality of homosexual acts was very incomplete because any moral issue about which people disagree always raises the more fundamental issue about criteria. In other words, by what criteria should we judge whether a given act is right or wrong? Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, we, uh, uh, we have to be careful about judging things in terms of moral, uh, in terms of emotion that I just happen to, you know, I have gay friends and therefore I can't be, this can't be done. Um, you know, and, uh, uh, um, if two men consent to engage in sexual acts according to utilitarianism, such an act would be okay. Um, but notice too that if a 10 year old agrees to a sexual act with a 40 year old, such an act would be moral if it is, it would also be moral even if it is illegal under current law, under utilitarianism. Because utilitarianism says as long as nobody's hurt, it's okay. Well, um, that would be arguable, but <laughs> but you know, yeah, uh, 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 um, you know, um, well, then he goes ahead and said the case of the forty and ten year olds we could presently not, uh, uh, you know, might be excluded with a modification like informed consent mm-hmm. because he may not have sufficient knowledge and therefore be okay. He he really does, you know, goes into that, and so. Um, the more significant problem has to do with the fact that 
consent criterion uh, uh, is not related to the nature of the act itself. This is where natural moral law objects. Natural moral law says that morality, capital M, must be a response to reality. In other words, sexual acts are only appropriate for people who are complementary, not the same. How do we know this? By looking at reality. Mm-hmm. So, so um, all right. Now, so th- this teacher was removed by the school because of this complaint. Because of this hearsay anonymous complaint. <laughs> so, um, now, he is coming back. He uh, appealed to the Alliance Defense Fund, which is a conservative group, and they, um, together with the Foundation for Individual Rights in Education, signed a, sent uh, letters to the chancellor. Uh, telling him you remove him and for this and you will be sued um, because this clearly comes under academic freedom. Freedom is the right of all sentient beings. Clearly comes under common sense too. <laughs> yeah, but you know, you know that's true. And the faculty senate was also investigating his dismissal. And their uh, um um uh, uh, whereas he has been offered a contract. And interestingly enough, up to this point, the Newman Center had been paying his salary. Now the university itself will be paying its, his salary. <laughs> yeah, uh, funny how that worked out. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, you know, uh, um, which I think is good because it really gives them more... Nerds! Um, that they should be. I mean, if he's teaching a course that forged... Students are given college credit. They should cover his salary, yeah. just like they do any other faculty member. So uh, I think that's a, a good thing. Um, so, uh, uh, but you know, really, this is an, a huge issue uh, for Christians: the issue of uh, of homosexuality, um, particularly in, in political correctness on college campuses. Um, there is a case of a young woman, I can't remember her name, Julia Ward's her name, uh, at Eastern Michigan State University. And she was in their counseling program as a graduate student and told if she did not change her positions on uh, homosexuality, they would expel her from the program. Um, she said, this is my religious belief. This is what I believe scripture teaches. Uh, I could not in good conscience um, you know, tell a gay person to continue in gay relationships and they expelled her from the program. Um, she sued the federal court, uh, U.S. District Court for the Eastern District of Michigan, um, um, upheld her expulsion, which is the first time a federal court ever upheld a broad and vague university speech code, according to her lawyer. At the same time, a very similar case um, is in play at the um, Augusta State University where another young woman, and I can't remember her name offhand, uh, also was a um, um, in graduate school for um, uh, – and we have a freeze. Sorry about that, everybody. Uh, yeah, um, really be like an adjustment counselor in a school. Um, and was told the same thing. If you don't change your beliefs, we will dismiss you from the program. Oh, that's not right. No. Yeah. So I think this is huge. You know, this is a huge topic. Um, because, you know, uh, uh, there is a huge pressure on students at secular colleges. If you don't... You know, you know, uh, we believe in tolerance, which means you have to think like we do. Mm-hmm. So I don't know, Jim. How do you you look good in in orange? Well, you see now that that's a question under federal hate crime laws. Can we be prosecuted? Tough and boys, we're putting this dirt bag away. You know, I I'm starting to wonder. 
I, you know, I'm beginning Matter to wonder which. See, why you do you know? think that I'm figuring out how to, you know, stream my sermons and all that kind of stuff? I might eventually be streaming them from a prison cell. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I just, it gets to be stuff. But good news is for Professor Howell, though, is that he was reinstated. And, um, you know, and hopefully that puts it to a thing. But that's where, you know, we've really got to have courts, I think, that look at what the Constitution says, particularly about the freedom of speech. Freedom of and the freedom of con- and the freedom of religion, the freedom of association, and that's where these these situations become extremely important to hold to, mm-hmm. um, and to look at, and to, you know, because uh, there is a, um, you know, I think the persecution for the church in these areas is only going to grow. Mm-hmm. I think it'll be good for the church. Not that I'm, you know, looking forward to it or anything, but I think it's going to be good for the church. The more the church is persecuted, the better it is for the church. So maybe Christian church Jesus thrives. can't come soon enough for me. Well, that's for sure. So, okay, I talked most about that because this is, by the way, just an area that has, um, for a very long time has interested me, and that is uh, uh, the rights of students on campus and the rights of professors um, has been, a, I was telling Dale, has just been a, a, a fascination for me for uh, ever since the mid-80s. So uh, I really do pay a lot of attention to what's going on on those things. Um, great links, by the way, is the, the fire.org, um, which is uh, the Foundation for Individual Rights in Education. Uh, and they're really big on the whole issue of speech codes and things. Um, um MindingTheCampus.com, which is a kind of commentary on a lot of issues, and um, TellADF.org, which is the um, um, website for the Alliance Defense Fund. So you'll find a lot of stuff on those things about what's going on at university campuses. So similar uh, story over in North Carolina. Um, I think it's related. Uh, we have a uh, Dr. Ronnie Beatty, Baptist pastor in Winston-Salem, was asked to give the opening prayers during the first week of the legislative session. But when they read his prayer, asked him to consider not praying in the name of Jesus. He refused to remove references to Jesus in his prayer, offered the beginning prayer during the first session, but was told that he would not be needed for the rest of the week. So we've talked about these kind of stories before. Um, it's, it's, so I don't want to spend a lot of time on it, but, you know, this is the kind of thing that keeps popping up. And, um, so, okay, what it comes down to is, if you're going to have a pastor, for, you know, for one, like, you, you have to ask, why are you having a pastor there in the first place? Um, starting with a prayer, if you don't want, any specific religion referred to. In that case, get somebody who's not associated with one specific religion. Um, <laughs> or, you know, get a, I don't know, Unitarian or something like that. They, or a anything goes kind of person. Um, but, uh, if we're in trouble. There's, uh, they sent out a letter, uh, encouraging that, uh, 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 the Christian Legal Association is uh, requesting an apology, and uh, this letter has been sent to state officials. They said, our hope is that the Speaker will look at the Constitution and that our opinion is that if you give good people good information, the hope is they'll make good decisions. We'd rather not see this in court. Um, right. I'm not sure what, what, how they're going, to, what, what the law, how they would sue. They're basically now looking for a prince, a, uh, uh, um, you know, really looking for an apology. Um, and um, the the speaker's name, uh, the, 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 it was actually the clerk of the the, the courthouse whose name was uh, Denise Denise Weeks, and. Um, you know, um, okay. I, I, maybe it's just me. Um, 
I mean, you know, they, they certainly have, I think, history and court cases on their side. Yeah, I don't, don't think they could, um, yeah, they re- respectfully request the Speaker's Office to the clerk provide uh, Pastor Beatty with a letter of apology and extend to him an invitation to return to Raleigh to offer the opening prayer for the legislator again without attempting again to censor or disapprove the manner in which his religion requires him to pray. Um, should this very reasonable and entirely appropriate request be denied or not acted upon within 10 days, our office will advise Dr. Beatty of his other legal options. Um, as a pastor who has successfully served in the state of North Carolina for many decades, we certainly hope that no further action on his part will be necessary. Um, and this was on July 7, 2010, that they sent the letter. So I'm not sure what's happened since then. Um, but, okay. My opinion is, bring the guy in. Whoever it is, Christian, Muslim, Jewish, Unitarian, whatever, give him his five minutes. Let him do his thing. I don't have to like it. I don't have to bow my head. I don't have to even be there. Do what must be done. Mm -hmm. You know, do your thing. Say what you want. Stand on your, I don't care. You know, I mean, when I was, uh, uh, my, my, okay, Missouri Senate people, you can, you know, start coming after me now. Uh, my one, um, deal with doing any type of ecumenical service was, uh, or interfaith was a, um, graveside, it was a dedication of a veterans cemetery. Um, and they wanted different pastors to be there. And they said, each of you has five minutes to do your thing. For five minutes. You know, and we don't care what you do in that five minutes. For five minutes! Mm-hmm. You know, I talked about the resurrection. Somebody else read Lincoln's Gettysburg Address. Somebody else led everybody singing the Navy hymn. You know, I talked about the resurrection. And the hope, the Christian hope that we have. Uh, I had somebody come up to me and going, I'm glad somebody said, said something about that. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody else did. <laughs> um, and so I was just, you know, and I prayed the name of Jesus. And I know I, I, I think I prayed the name of the triune God. I mean, you know, I was intentionally, confessionally Christian in what I did. Now, I had nobody. Ob- I, now, there was a Jewish rabbi there. There was. Um, there's a Native American guy, but he did his thing the day before. Their, their ceremonies were private, so they, they he didn't do anything that day. I. Neither one of them said a said a word to me. I mean, I mean, they both said, "You know, good to meet you, nice to meet you." Neither one of them said, oh, "I found that highly offensive." Yeah, you know, we were all told, "You have five minutes. Do what you want. Stand on your head." The guy said, "I don't care." You know, you know, just you got your five minutes. Do whatever it is your religion says you should do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that I, makes sense. I I see this as the same way. Why would you yeah. call somebody in? that represents a particular viewpoint and tell them you can say whatever you want as long as it's not your particular viewpoint. That's right. <laughs> What's the point? <laughs> I mean, I was at a, a meeting one time and this woman had this prayer, opened with this prayer and she ended it and we pray this and whatever our understanding is, you know, but I pray in the name of Jesus or something like that. I can't remember how she said it. I thought, if you're going to put it in Jesus' name, put it in Jesus' name. Mm-hmm. You know? uh, but, you know, in and and this particular meeting, I, you know, or just don't have prayer. Don't, don't open the, you know, nobody has to, nobody says you have to open the legislative session with prayer. Yeah. <laughs> don't do it. But yeah. if you're going to do it, let the guy get up and do his thing. Right. Or, or don't call in a Christian pastor. <laughs> right. You know, I mean... Uh, that North Carolina is part of the Bible Belt. I thought people would have more sense down there. North Carolina? Well, yeah, I guess. Um, although, maybe they should have gotten this nutcase in Florida. <laughs> there you go. What is this guy? Crazy? 
I, I, I'm, I'm serious, man. I, I now this, then, uh, granted, this was written by Slate, which is not one of the, you know, but. Yeah. But, eh, at the same time. Alright, so this is. He inter- strikes me as a bit of a scammer. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. Alright, Internet Pastor Bill Keller, um, wants to, alright, you've probably heard about that they want to build this mosque. Or it, it, it's a, a Muslim relations sort of building. Um, like part of the building's already there. They just want to expand it. Um, and, uh, and, and like right by ground zero in New York. All right. And so a lot of people are really upset about that because they're saying, look, it was, this was in the name of the Muslim God that, that all this happened in the first place and, and now you want to put something there. It's just sort of like thumbing your nose and, at people. All right. And yeah, I, I've got, I can, I can see both sides of the argument. Okay. Um, now this guy is, he's thumbing his nose at the Muslims. All right. He wants to put up a nine 11 Christian center and, uh, it's, uh, Find a happy place. Find a happy place. Find a happy place. He, I mean, he's a Christian, so he says that Islam's a false religion. He says that um, its adherents are going to hell. Well, well that's Christianity, okay? Um, and uh, so uh, he says that he is going to have this this nine uh, eleven Christian Center at Ground Zero uh, built. Uh, he's not in New York, doesn't know anybody in New York. He lives in Florida. Um, but he's, uh, asking people to donate money to him so that he can build this thing. And, uh, it's going to cost a million dollars and it'll be used for legitimate purposes. Um, okay. Here's the first question. Where is he going to buy real estate and build a building in lower Manhattan? For a million bucks. Yeah. Good luck with that. Good luck with that, buddy. <laughs> it's going to be. I a, mean, <laughs> he's buying a porta potty. <laughs> I mean, we, we have a church here in, in Boston, okay? Not Manhattan, but in Boston, where um, the land that they're sitting on is worth about $8 million. You know, I mean, it's, it's you know, uh, um, let alone the building. You know, and as you go, and they're, they're not, they're not anywhere. I don't even think of our downtown church how much their land is worth. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you're going to put a porta potty up in Lower Manhattan for a million bucks. I mean, that, I, obviously, this guy, you know, is thinking Florida real estate prices. Uh huh. Depressed Florida real estate prices. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I, I don't know. Um, I, I mean. It's just kind of goofy. It like it. It sounds like a lot. Um, to depending where you live, you know, if you live in the out in rural Iowa or something like that, you know, million bucks. Oh, that's a that's a pretty big you know field for for farming. But um, well, that's not huge, but big enough to, for you to put a building on anyway. You know. But if you're in um, you know Manhattan, Lower Manhattan, where uh, Right down there where the where, where ground zero was. Um that is nothing. Um, you know, it's it's that 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 won't even get just that won't even get just started on the lawyer fees. Yeah. Um it, that's incredible. But uh now my, my favorite part and the re- and I I really I think this guy's a bit of a scammer. My favorite one is his gold for souls. <laughs> Why don't you talk about gold for soul? Now, this is what you should be doing for your church to raise money, Dale. There you go. Okay, so you've seen all those cash for gold. Um, there's a, we've got cash for gold place in the mall, and there's the commercials on TV and all that kind of stuff. You know, give us your gold, and we'll give you a fraction of its value in cash. And uh, so, um, so he's he said, "All right, send me." I, I like how they put it. Um, is our favorite is Gold for Souls, a project of Keller's LivePrayer.com Ministries, which advertises personal responses to all email prayer requests. Um, it's a service where you send Keller your gold, jewelry, diamonds, and precious items, and, well, that's about it. <laughs> 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 
This is a guy who dedicated his life to ministering after an insider trading conviction in 1989. <laughs> All right. So now we've talked about, you know, people who, um, who have, have been, you know, criminals or whatever and then became, um, Christians and became pastors after that. And okay, fine. All right. But, um, you know, this is a guy that is, um, you know, you can, he talks about all the immorality in our nation and he says, now you can be part of this great movement to turn this nation back to God and biblical truth. One way you can help is by donating your old gold and jewelry to goldforsouls.com. So this is, you know, this is Reverend Send Me Money. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I, yeah I, I mean, I, seriously, this, right, like that, this strikes me a little bit of a scam, you know. Maybe it's just me, you know, but I'm sitting there going, you know, uh, uh, um, send me this stuff. Um, and then, of course, the other part of this guy is that he got involved in an infomercial about Obama's birth certificate with a conservative activist with the wonderful name of Gary Creep. <laughs> <laughs> I love that name. Now, I think I would change my name. Uh-huh. <laughs> hey, Creep. I mean, that's that not a, that's the kind of a creep. That is a name I would change. Okay. Yeah. No. Um, he said, no, I just hosted it. You know, I was paid to host and produce this, this thing. I, you know, although they turned around, and he says, it would be nice to see someone get a hold of that every good birth certificate. I'm, guys, listen, you know, seriously, I didn't vote for our, our president. I, if you gave me a chance in 2012, I'm sure I will vote against him again, but let it go. Mm-hmm. Even even if you're right, you're not going to win. <laughs> you know, <laughs> when it comes even, to he, he, nobody's going to nobody's going to you know no it's it, you know it'd be, it would throw the country into crisis at this stage. Let it go, move on. Yeah. Not only that, you think that he can't come up with a forgery? <laughs> That's right. So, you know, it's not even worth your time. No. You know, it, it's, it, you know, and um, as far as I know, as far as I'm concerned, the guy was born in Hawaii. Who cares? We should never have brought the Hawaiian Islands to this American <laughs> state anyway. But that's another st- story. <laughs> so, no, I, I of- like how this guy's planning on, you know, he's, he wants to raise this million dollars. Okay. So. He is eager to get started, so he claims he's going to travel to New York from Florida once a week starting in September and preach at the Embassy Suites Hotel in Lower Manhattan until he finds a permanent home, or perhaps more likely the project fizzles. But, all right, so, so send him your money so that he can fly to New York and stay at the Embassy Suites. <laughs> I wouldn't mind going to New York and staying at the Embassy Suites. I'd love to. Send me your gold and diamonds and precious jewelry. <laughs> I'll even send you some steak knives or something. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's nice work if you can get it. I guess. See, nobody uh, told I, this guy that if you want to get rich, you have to start your own religion. Don't just latch onto somebody else's. Now wait a minute. That, now, of course, that was L. Ron Hubbard who said that. But there, are, you know, hey, we have Root and Toot and Robert Tilton. We've had Jimmy Swaggart. We've had Jim and Tammy Faye Baker. There's been a whole world of people who've done really good in the name of Jesus. Yeah, yeah, uh, I know. You know, <laughs> but that and, uh, me. Well, that does so. That you know, and here's here's another one of these guys. Um, I'm pretty sure, you know, and yeah, I mean, yeah. Hey, give me a, a week, once a week uh, trip to uh, New York and let me stay and preach in the NBC Suites uh, in downtown Manhattan. I'd do pretty good, too. I'd hate to see how much that would cost you. Um, yeah. Especially from Florida. It'd be cheaper for me if you want to send me there. I live a lot closer to New York than Florida. You know, then yeah, but it's it'd be a shorter trip. He can fly jet blue pretty cheap, but I don't think uh, that's what he's plan- planning on taking up. Probably I'm not. sure it's probably sure it's something that I don't think it's Southwest either. I'm sure it's probably something that's uh, first class all the way. I'd, I'd fly Spirit where you have to pay extra for your carry on. <laughs> if I could get a free trip to New York once a week, heck yeah. <laughs> Make it every other week so I can take my wife with me. <laughs> yeah, okay. 
Well, okay. You know what? Maybe he should just try to hold this in, in, in Arizona because nobody else is going there right now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so everybody's heard about the um, Arizona's new immigration law, um, which a court said is illegal. So it's not even being enforced anyhow. But that's beside the point. Go ahead. All right. So um, the uh, Presbyterian Church. Let's say which one. General Assembly of the Presbyterian Church. Uh, it's got to be PCUSA, Pacuza. Well, yeah, I mean that would be my guess. Um, voted. This is, man, I wish we could get votes like this. 420 to 205. That's a pretty decent, respectable percentage. <laughs> Those are always like 52 to 48. <laughs> but, all right. To refrain from holding national meetings in states where travel by immigrant Presbyterians or Presbyterians of color might subject them to harassment due to legislation. <laughs> Which is a specific okay, reference you know to Arizona. <laughs> And if we, uh, if they put this one up, it would have been 52, four, it would, it would have been 420, 225 the other way, yeah. uh, for us. We, we would have gotten 60% saying, no, we're heading to Arizona. <laughs> Let's set this thing in Phoenix. Uh, which, shout out to my sister, my daughter KJ, she's in Phoenix right now. So. Now continue. Alright, so, um, well, I mean, that's, that's sort of it. Um, they're gonna, they're, you know, they're basically saying we're not gonna have meetings there. And I mean, I like how they put it. This is like, well, we don't want our, our, you know, delegates or whatever to get arrested. Right. Um, but, you know, clearly this is speaking out against, um, against this proposed Arizona law and, um, <clears throat> and just to, you know, to speak out and say, look, we're not against institutionalized racism. So, um, there's a number of, uh, according to Arizona Republic's most recent tally, 23 organizations said they will avoid travel and business arrangements with Arizona. Paper describes them as cities and towns and six colleges and school districts. Um, <clears throat> so, I, you know, I, were they previously meeting in Arizona? Probably not. I don't know. Um, you know, they, 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 Arizona says it's lost, you know, a lot of money from groups, you know, boycotting it and stuff because of this. Um, I guess they start Virginia next because Virginia just is forced the very same law, only slightly differently. Um, you know, of course, then there's always the woman in, in uh, Milwaukee sitting on the city council and they decided their city council uh, the, of Milwaukee should uh, protest and she goes I could understand if they were upset if you know Arizona sat right on the border of Mexico you know like uh, <laughs> Texas does but it's at least two states away <laughs> <laughs> maybe so we should get her a map huh that's kind of like yeah. the well I just said I said some of them on the other count and you heard also these what well, she's saying that she had these people on the Audience going, what this woman talking about? You know, and murmuring. And then when the other comments members, I want to assure my colleague that Arizona does sit on the Mexican border. Well, that, that's sort of like the um, the story I heard back when it was back during before the Atlanta Olympics. Um, there was a guy that called to get tickets to an event, and they um, the the caller or the the operator. Um, that was taking the ticket orders, uh, asked for his address, and he, he told her it was in New Mexico. And she says, uh, I'm sorry, sir, we can only uh, take uh, ticket orders from the United States. He says, I live in New Mexico. I'm sorry, sir, New Mexico, old Mexico, doesn't matter. We can only take people from the United States. Sorry about this. I know it's a bit silly. Lady, you know when... Bugs Bunny says you should have taken that left twang in Albuquerque. <laughs> That's in New Mexico. Yeah, well, he ended up in, you know, ancient Arabia. So. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Maybe Atlanta. Who knows? <laughs> okay. So uh, our friend Benito um, sent us a comment on the story. And he says, um, I hope every American, regardless of where he lives, will stop and examine his conscience about this and other related incidents. This nation was founded by men of many nations and backgrounds. It was founded on the principle that all men are created equal and that the rights of every man are diminished when the rights of one man are threatened. 
All of us all have the right to be treated as he would wish to be treated, as one would wish his children to be treated, but that is not always the case. I know the proponents of this law say that the majority approves of this law, but the majority is not always right. Would women or non-whites have the vote if we listen to the majority of the day? Would the non-whites have equal rights and equal access to churches, housing, restaurants, hotels, retail stores, schools, colleges, and yes, water fountains if we listen to the majority of the day? We all know the answer, a resounding no. As for the undocumented workers, as was attributed to Ronald Reagan, it's the economy, stupid. When the economy is good, you say, let's all celebrate Cinco de Mayo, my brothers. When the economy is down, it's all your, it's your fault, you damn immigrant. This too will pass. The real problem is the narcos, uh, arms and people smugglers, and that's what the focus should be on. Today, we are committed to a worldwide struggle to promote and protect the rights of all who wish to be free. At a time of domestic crisis, men of goodwill and generosity should be able to unite regardless of party or politics and do what is right, not just what is popular with the majority. Some men comprehend discrimination by never having experienced it in their lives, but the majority will understand after it happens to them. Okay, <clears throat> first, we need help. The phrase, it's the economy, stupid, was not said by Ronald Reagan. It was said by Bill Clinton, actually by James Carville, his campaign manager, who wrote it on the side of his thing. That was the theme of what their their uh, um, campaign was all about against George, the, the, the for, first George uh, Bush, George H.W. Bush. So just, just a slight correction there. Um, the problem... You said the real problem is the narcos, the arms, and people smugglers. Well, that's really is the issue when you're talking about illegal immigration. Um, you know, that some people are coming into the states. Um, my question, but the, the other side of that story that needs to be understood is that a lot of these um, undocumented workers, these illegal aliens are being exploited as well mm -hmm. because they're in the United States illegally and they know that, you know, there's like, people are exploiting them, paying them, uh, underpaying them, uh, abusing them in many cases. Um, and uh, we've had a situation up here in Massachusetts where they raided this this place that was uh, using illegal uh, aliens and you know these people are getting paid you know it, it was a sweatshop they were they were you know you now everything you ever heard about you know from people back in the you know unsafe place to work and you know 12 hour days and uh, that's everything that was going on uh, one of the towns up here, I was recently doing some evangelism, and and the people in the neighborhood was saying, you know, there's 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 20 people living in this, you know, apartment, you know, and they're all illegal aliens, and you know, they're 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 they're, they're they, you know, they're it's not them, but the conditions in which they're they're living and stuff is ruining the neighborhood. So there, there there's some issues here that we really do need to look at, and unfortunately, they're not easy issues to deal with. Yeah. I mean, yeah. The biggest problem is that the people that you know that are really desperate, they want to come to the United States for a better life. You know, um, right now the way that the system stands, and I know somebody that is here because their parents um, sneaked into the country, and um, and so she grew up here uh, because of that. Um, that a lot of the people that that really want to come here that are more than happy to, to work and, um, you know, and earn their way and pay their taxes and all that kind of stuff, um, are, they can't, there's just, you need to have money, you need to have connections and things in order to, uh, to become an American citizen. So we need immigration reform. We need to see what we can do for the, uh, Mexican and other governments of where people are, um, are coming here because they're so desperate to get out of their own country, see what we can do to change their country so they're not so desperate to leave. Um, we uh, need to, I've heard some really good suggestions. I was talking about this um, with some people this week and heard some great suggestions like uh, uh, incentives for employers that when 
uh, basically financial incentives to turn in illegal immigrants instead of um, instead of hiring them and exploiting them. Um, some kind of incentive that way, uh, you know, different things like that. There's, there are other ways to handle this. Uh, so I'm not a huge fan of the, uh, the Arizona law. Um, <clears throat> but you know, and, and I'm also, I'd, I'd really like to find a way for those who are here illegally to, um, to find a way, you know, that if they, if they really legitimately, want to be here and contribute and, you know, and all that kind of thing, um, to, to enable them to do that, but by going through the proper channels and, and things like that. And, um, you know, it's just, it's not cut and dry. We want to be, um, we want to have mercy on them that, um, this country is, you know, give me your tire, your, your poor, your huddled masses. Um, and, uh, but, you know, at the same time, we can't just have this sort of mass exodus into our country um and and all of a sudden our economy collapses and everything else i'm not saying that they're the reason the economy collapsed or anything but um that would be if we just sort of threw open the gates right uh and remember arizona law is actually almost an exact copy of federal law it wouldn't hurt if the federal government just simply enforced border security <laughs> uh, something you know, said and, for that uh, um, the problem is, it's just, you know, how many people can we take care of? Um, especially when many of them are very poor and needy. How f- before that begins overwhelming, um, you know, our own safety net and things, uh, you know, and our own structures. I was bringing this to today about this hospital in Dallas, you know, and how many millions of dollars they give away each year in, uh, uh, prenatal care and in, delivery of the children of illegal aliens. And under Texas law, you cannot be turned away for maternity, even if you have no insurance, even if you're in the country illegally. So, you know, I mean, that's it's an issue. Those types of things can be issues. And mm-hmm. it, I, I just get, you know, and, and, and Benito, I, I liked a lot what you said, um, but I think a lot of times we just got to sit back and re- remind ourselves there are no easy answers. I wish there were. Absolutely. Um. But even the answers that we get will be a problem because we're in a fallen world. So even the answers you come up with have their own problems. Yep. But uh, but now that wasn't the only topic we got mail on this week. We got the other one. Would you want to share that one? Um, uh, the LCMS, two different... Um, uh, topics or responses to last week's episode. Um, we got one, and these are on YouTube. Uh, 33 the FZ, um, Sino said, just FYI, not all of President elect Harrison's three named assistants were from his LCMS World Relief and Human Care Office. Two of them were Barb Below and Reverend Al Culver, but the third, Reverend John Beaker, uh, Harrison Senior Assistant has served for more than the last decade as the Assistant Executive Director of the LCMS Commission on Worship. I would concur that these are top flight people and are absolutely tremendous selections. Right. Um, you're absolutely right about that. Thanks. Th- I, I, and I knew that, um, and I did misspeak. Thank you for the correction. But, yeah, I did realize John Beaker actually, you know, was uh, on the Commission for Worship. Matter of fact, I think he was one of the top editors of um, the um, Lutheran Service Book. That was kind of why he was added to do that, was really to oversee that project. I was a good guy. I worked with him um, at the seminary library when I was there. So, um, And uh, Torkelson100 said, Is the LCMS joint evangelism with other denominations to reach out to Muslims to include Reformed congregations, or is it only with those who call themselves Lutheran? Uh-huh. And we were a bit, about, a bit confused about that question. See, Billy Idol gets it. I don't know why she doesn't get it. So, um, this, it was a malaria thing, was what we were talking about. Mm-hmm. So, um, not sure the the point about the Muslims. So, if you wanna, uh, if you wanna clarify that, we, um, uh, just not sure on that one. Sorry. 
Right. Uh, the other, just to kind of to give a, 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 a an answer, if it is actually something that would be um, evangelism or sharing the gospel in a very narrow sense, we would not participate with other groups. Uh, we separate what we call uh, uh, um, um, cooperation and externals from what we talk about in terms of um, um, specifically gospel or word and sacrament ministry. Mm -hmm. So, for example, this Lutheran Malaria Initiative, yes, we're working with Lutheran World Relief and Lutheran, um, um, the ELCA and us, um, through a grant, raising some funds on our own, but also a grant to the United Nations, and we're going to work only with Lutheran partner churches overseas. Mm -hmm. um, however, um, you know, certainly our local churches, for example, myself, we're involved with our community food pantry. And that's, you know, us and the Jewish synagogue and the uh, uh, UCC and the Unitarians and the, uh, um, you know, the, the, the Methodists. And, uh, you know, we all believe, you know, we all believe in providing food for the hungry. Mm. So that's a cooperation and an external thing um, without necessarily being word and sacrament oriented. Right, right. Yeah, and this is, this is actually something that would distinguish us from the Wisconsin Synod Lutherans. Um, right. I remember when I was at the seminary down in St. Louis, there was, uh, Mississippi River was flooding. And, uh, so a bunch of churches got together and started sandbagging to protect some homes. And, uh, and so you had like all these different churches, Lutherans, Presbyterians, you know, you name it. And, uh, and they were all working together sandbagging. A little ways down the river from them, like distinctly separate for them was the Wisconsin Synod doing their own sandbagging. Uh, it just like, Oh, okay. All right. Well, great. But you know, it was just sort of odd for, for us because of our distinction there in cooperation, um, that for them fellowship and, and it's like everything. Right. They have what we call the unit concept. I just hope they had good Wisconsin scented sand. <laughs> yeah, well, see, a lot of my on my mom's side, a lot of my family is Wisconsin scented, and um, see, they they would sort of break the rules when we'd get together for family gatherings, and we'd all pray before a meal. So, um, no, they distinguish between private prayer in the home and public prayer. Ah, uh, okay. Because uh, the the local Wisconsin scented. Um, uh, pastor in uh, Rockford, Illinois. Yes, I'm speaking of you, Lawrence, uh, and I are we're, we're, we're very good friends. And uh, but he would, um, we you know we would pray before we ate dinner together. And um, uh, they were over at the house one time, and I said, you, you know, you go ahead and lead the prayer. He goes, Jim, you can pray. I said, but you're not supposed to pray together. And he said, no, this is private. It's different. Yeah. You tell me what the rules are, buddy. I'll find. <laughs> I'll. I'm cool with it. Okay. So, you know, but anyway, so that kind of ends everything for this week, folks. It's really good to be podcasting. I think we're going to be back on a regular schedule again, except maybe, um, uh, Labor Day weekend. We'll have to see about, uh, what that looks like. But, uh, we otherwise will be back at it on a much more regular schedule now that everything's really like calming down a little bit. Mm -hmm. Uh, at least through October, we should be. Yep. So, um, want to let you know if you're not aware of it, um, that we have tonight actually, we started up, um, at my church the, a study on the epistles of John. And if you go to shepherdoftheridge.org, you can watch our first, um, sort of episode or I recorded the, um, class. And so, um, you can watch and, and, and feel free to offer your comments, even though you wouldn't be watching it live because it, it's recorded now. Um, but, at uh, 7 o'clock Eastern every Sunday night, uh, we will be continuing that class. And if you'd like to join in with that discussion, um, we welcome you to do that. We had a handful of people that were there for a little while tonight. And um, that was really neat and happy to have them there. And so uh, really want to just invite you, encourage you to um, participate if, if you're so inclined. So That sounds good. 
All right. And, oh, and uh, thank you, everybody, f- for the feedback. Uh, you can uh, send us feedback by uh, emailing us at podcast at crossfeednews.com, or if you're watching this on YouTube or one of the other file-sharing sites, you can um, you can post a note there, and we'll get your comment. And we always respond to comments on the following episode, so uh, we don't get into long discussions on the uh on like in the comments threads usually uh just because we'd like to have the opportunity to respond um in in a way that on the show to sort of give you a shout out and express our appreciation for your comment and stuff like that and of course we always happy to hear a response from from people uh beyond that as well so love to hear from you and thank you very much and good night everybody and god bless and